The Edsel pretty much are one of the last remaining big German rock bands of the 1980s. They are still around, wow. that are still active and that I'm super excited to be doing this reaction with you guys. Today we are going to be taking another video from Germany and this is Die Adzin, a legendary German rock band, English documentary. I'm going to be exploring these artists, you know, learning one or two about the artists. And recently I've been taking a close talk through German content and you guys, it has been splendid all the way. So today let's check out this video together. But if you're new to the channel, please make sure you like, subscribe to my channel. Feel free to make priority requests from Buy Me Coffee and let's get right into today's Reaction. Hello zusammen. Some of you might have watched my previous Rammstein related videos on this channel and arguably they are one of the biggest German bands all over the world internationally ever. But that doesn't mean that Germany doesn't have to offer many other great bands and artists. Yeah. And that is why today I want to invite you to, well, check out another German band. A staple in terms of German punk rock you could say. Wow. And I'm talking about the Ärzte, the Doctors. I personally think in terms of their creativity, the in terms of their various lyrics from funny to serious topics, uh, in terms of their musicianship, they definitely deserve a an even bigger spot than they already have in the limelight. I guess my video is not really capable of lifting them sort of to an internationally great German band, but that's not the purpose of this one at all. I just want to introduce you to Die Ärzte and why they are a really, really cool German rock band. <laughs> Next to the Toten Hosen, the Dead Trousers or Pants, the Ärzte pretty much are one of the last remaining big German rock bands of the 1980s. They are still around, wow. that are still active and that are still really successful. Formed in 1982, they have... From the 1980s and they are still active and very successful. Wow, that's impressive. I've, I've not actually, you know, listened to them. I've not actually heard their song. The only German artists Recently, I discovered that Germans that have listened to them should be um, Ramstein and Scorpion. But most of my reaction discovery about German songs are actually very impressive. I'm still here to take a close dive into German content, like their music and, you know, wide spectrum of their lifestyle as well released 13 studio albums, many different singles, also some live recordings and they are still going strong live and especially also recording wise because right now they are recording a new album. Hmm. In a way, Die Ärzte are a perfect German example of a so-called so power yeah. trio, a rock band which only features three members, similar to bands like The Police or Rush for instance. The two still active founding members are Farin Urlaub, aka Jan Ulrich Max Vetter, born in West Berlin in 1963. He's the band's main songwriter, guitarist and singer. His nickname is derived from a passionate hobby of his, the colloquial phrase Fahr in Urlaub, go on vacation, for Ich fahr in den Urlaub. To date, he has traveled most countries in the world and many of his songs were written somewhere around the world, from Japan all over to Africa. The other wow. one is Bela B, aka Dirk Felsenheimer, born in West Berlin in 1962. He's the band's drummer and also another songwriter and singer. His nickname is derived from Bela Lugosi, a well-known former Hungarian actor who portrayed Dracula in the eponymous movie in 1931. The second B is a reference to Barney Geröllheimer, aka Barney Rubble in English. And since the family name Geröllheimer sounds similar to his real last name Felsenheimer, Bela kept the B as a part of his nickname. As a drummer, he literally stands out, well, stands up I should rather say, because he's playing standing straight. Up until their first and only break up to date in 1980. Did you just say he plays standing straight? Because I know drummer seats to play there. Draw their band? Wow, <laughs> impressive. Eight, they had two different basses in the band. The first one, and also a founding member, was Zani, who played bass until 1986, and then the incredible Hagen took over until that mentioned breakup in 1988. 
I think there is one important difference that needs to be mentioned about the Ärzte being considered a punk band. As they have stated multiple times, they weren't interested in being a solely serious political punk band, which was pretty much common back in the late 70s, the rise of punk, and the early 80s. They do have some rather political songs which address general moral topics, but many other of their songs deal with everyday things, philosophical aspects and funny hilarious things. The Ärzte released their first studio album, Debil, in 1984. They rather quickly stirred some controversies with a few explicit fun songs, which led to the album getting indexed or banned from stores in 1987 by the German Bundesprüfstelle für Jugendgefährdende Medien, the Federal Examination Agency for Youth Harming Media. Uh, yeah, pretty much loosely translated. And yeah, that exists. Until the ban for the album was lifted in 2004. Hooray! Their third album, Die Ärzte, is still indexed to this day, which led to the band releasing a compilation album Ab 18, from 18 onwards, for adults, pretty much, which refers to being considered an adult from the age of 18 onwards in Germany. This compilation, released in the mid-80s, features all their band songs and was supposed to be sold only to people of at least 18 years of age. What? Guess what? It things? also got indexed to this day, but still <laughs> managed to reach number 33 in the German album chart back in the day. <laughs> For instance, one of these indexed German songs by the ads that deals with Claudia Schiffer, a German model, who actually has a dog and, uh, you know, or had a dog back in the day, I guess. Well, that song is about not having that dog as a pet, but for more than that some intimate things, you know. I'd personally say even a sarcastic, a hilarious song, an openly directly hilarious song like this one, still has a serious core to it, which I think is a really interesting mixture. Next to many comparably harmless single hits in the 1980s, these indexations were big factors in the rising popularity of the band in the early years. This even led to the band being featured in the German Bravo, a magazine for teenagers. And when you think about it, teens that became fans of the band in the early 80s are now almost 40 years older. Crazy. Besides a popular German cover of the Bengal sit Walk Like an Egyptian, Gehen wie ein Ägypter, including funny stressings of certain German words in order to make them fit into the meter, two of their most popular songs from that period their rather pop-punky 80s time period, so to speak, were zu spät, too late, and Westerland referring to a city on the island of Sylt, and both songs remain life staples to this day. However, at the height of their success, Farin Urlaub and Bela B decided to disband Die Ärzte in 1988. They weren't fighting or having an argument, it was simply the most contraintuitive and, you know, most unforeseen thing they could have possibly done at that point, which is why they did that. After around five years with rather unsuccessful solo careers slash other bands, this time with both of them singing English, they reunited again in 1993, this time with Rodrigo Gonzalez on bass, who previously had played with the Rainbirds, a German band that is known for their big single hit Blueprint, a great song by the way. Each of these three members, Bela, Farin and Rott, contribute own compositions with slightly changing instrumentation at times, especially live. For instance, for certain songs, Farin and Rott would switch playing guitar and bass. At this point in time, the new Germany was a young, reunited democracy, a country, and many hostels and buildings for asylum seekers were attacked and demolished by neo-Nazis. And that was when the Ärzte decided to release a political song, which arguably became their biggest and probably also most acclaimed and important song, Schrei nach Liebe, Scream for Love, which is a direct statement against Nazis, and on top of that, a catchy rocking tune, I think. In general, their songs from the 90s onwards were musically heavier, with more edge to them, with heavier distorted electric guitars and multiple successful albums in a row. One of their biggest and most successful albums was their eighth one, titled 13. 13. It was released in 1998 and features another big hit for Die Ärzte, Männer sind Schweine, Men are Pigs. The music video to this again catchy pop punk rockish type of hit got massive airplay and broadcast time because it featured an animated Lara Croft fighting against the band members. Especially considering back in the day Tomb Raider was the shit, with Lara Croft being one of the first really strong women in video game history that really had a forefront role in a way. 
In 2002, they filmed and released an MTV Unplugged live album called Rock'n'Roll Realschule, a fun take on the Ramones 1979 soundtrack album Rock'n'Roll High School, even though it wasn't filmed at a German Realschule, but at a German Gymnasium, a grammar school or prep school, which is not to be confused with the English Gymnasium. And talking about live shows by Die Ärzte, real quick. It's not an exception by far, but the regular case that they play live for at least two and a half up to three hours most of the time, and all three are We're highly communicative on stage. They make fun of each other and also actively involve the audience with unique, fun activities and tasks according to the songs. When I saw them live for the second time after 2012 at Rock am Ring 2019, they made us activate the flashlights of our cell phones and jump in a square according to the beat of the song. It shows the noun Junge, der Junge, the boy, which is one of Die Ärzte's biggest modern hit songs. They also made us participate a lot, especially Farin likes to come up with funny ideas for audience participation. At their last gig at Rock am Ring in 2007, he invented the so-called Sitzlaola, the sitting Mexican wave. We were supposed to jump every time Farin would play his very short guitar lick what? in the verse to Fiasco, Fiasco, which you might be able to see here. A little jump back to 2003 when they released their double album Geräusch, Sound or Noise. This was when I really became an active fan of the band and their singles Unrockbar, Unrockable or Deine Schuld, Your Fault were and still are massive tunes in my book. In 2012, they released their last album to date, Auch, too, or as well. However, ever since they have been working on and off on a new album and even released two new songs in 2019, Abschied, Goodbye, and Rückkehr, Return. And just recently in March 2020, Ein Lied für Jetzt, a song for now. Next to the Ärzte, all band members are active in other groups or as solo artists as well. I especially want to highlight and highly recommend checking out the Farin Olop Racing Team. It's basically a rock slash metal band that features Farin on vocals and guitars, 
being the mastermind and songwriter, a three-person women choir, a wind section quartet, including saxophone, trumpet, etc., and more members. And except for Farin and the wind section, all members are women. Their albums are among my favorite pieces of German music ever, again because they range from really humorous, hilarious lyrics to thought-provoking, more serious, even partially really philosophical ones. Their songs are really, really cool, and you know, the production is really cool as well. And to make this video a more immediate experience for you guys, I've also created a Spotify playlist with my favorite German Die Erste songs. And yeah, feel free to check it out. You can find a link to that one oh, in the video it. description down below. Apart from that, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, a thumbs up, oh, and also God. to share this video Please with others that, that might enjoy Die Erste and the German language, and even both at the same time, simultaneously, I don't know, Anyway, thanks for doing that in advance, thanks for your support, it really means a lot. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone, I'm your Vlog Dave, tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal. It's, it's great, he's great, he's a good storyteller, I enjoyed every part of this. And please do well to check the original link of this, you know, content creator channel in the description box below. Subscribe, like his videos. And I'm doing that. I've already done that myself. <laughs> this is actually very amazing to watch and um, you know, see history of some certain band. It's actually so great. So there I learned about the die at set. <laughs> God, I'm so sorry. I'm right now pronouncing it wrong. I just had it, but I still cannot pronounce it. I told you guys my previous reaction to geography now. It will take a lot for me to learn German, but I'm going to do that for you guys. <laughs> Actually, reacting to them, I'm you know beginning to grow more in love with their lifestyle and the things they do, their song most especially. This is amazing. The band is amazing. They actually work so hard to be where they are right now. Even when they split, they still came back together because they definitely need each other in this journey. This is so good. Thank you so much for watching this with me. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. And if I only knew a uh, Ramstein and Scorpion as one of those German bands, I think a plus one is added to my list of German bands I know today. And that's actually very good and a great discovery for me, you guys. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section. Please do not forget to like, subscribe to my channel. Please do where to use the links in the description box below. Feel free to buy me coffee. The link will be in the description box below. You can also make priority requests with my buy me coffee link as well. Thank you guys so much. Bye.